Hey guys, Josh with Budget Mechanic. Today we're going to be changing the water pump on a 2008 Toyota Corolla. And it's not a bad job. We're just going to drain the coolant, move the alternator out of the way, and replace that pump. 10 millimeter bolts. So you can see with the cover off, there's your water pump just next to and underneath your alternator. In order to get to the water pump, we're going to drain the coolant and push this alternator out of the way so we can access the water pump bolts. Under the driver's side, we're gonna remove this plastic shield so we can get to the radiator drain. Got a couple of these little plastic holders. This white handle right here, that's the drain screw. I'm gonna get my drain pan ready and try to capture as much of this coolant as I can because if it's in good shape, I'm going to reuse it. Always remember, wear eye protection under the car. Just crack it loose with some pliers first. It'll drain faster down below if you just crack your radiator cap loose a little bit. In order to get the belt off, we have to release the tension at the belt tensioner that you put your wrench on. It's a three quarter inch fitting or 19 millimeter. And I recommend you use a breaker bar, something with a lot of leverage. So you're gonna crank this towards the front of the car, which is gonna drop that tensioner pulley and release the tension on the belt, which will allow you to flip the belt off the alternator. Okay, we can pull that off. So before you pull this belt all the way out, take a good look at the routing around all the different pulleys so that when you put this back, you're not completely lost. Next. We're going to pull this alternator up out of the way and I'm just going to free up some of this wiring a little bit. I'm just going to unplug this guy right here. Little tab on the back, squeeze and pull. So the alternator has one 12 millimeter bolt on the top and a 14 millimeter bolt directly below. Crack the 12 loose at the top. The larger 14 millimeter bolt at the bottom directly underneath the alternator pulley. That bottom bolt was super tight. I couldn't get it with my half inch ratchet. So I'm gonna use my breaker bar or if you don't have one of those, stick a chunk of pipe over your ratchet handle or something to give you some more leverage. There we go. Underneath the alternator, there's another electrical connection which we should remove. So there's a little tab that you push down you should be able to wiggle this back and forth and side to side and work it off of its mount. But if it's stubborn, like this one's being, stick a nice long screwdriver in there and just pry it off. Just gonna kind of spin it up and lay it here. You could pull this wire, wire connection and your uh, hot wire off might make it a little easier. Uh, make sure you disconnect your battery before you do mess with this wire. But I'm just gonna leave these wires connected because I'm just putting this thing right back on after we pull the water pump. At this point, I like to pull out the new part and look at where the, the holes are so I know how many bolts I gotta take off this old one and roughly where they're gonna be. So we know we have one at the top, three on the right side, two underneath, nothing on the left. Before you start cracking loose your water pump, you wanna find another drain pan or dump your other one into a jug and you're gonna put it underneath this side of the engine because when you pull that water pump out, some residual coolant is gonna leak out and get all over your floor. I've got 10 millimeter bolts all around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn them like half or quarter turn loose all around first and then take them out because I want them to kind of go come out evenly and go in evenly so that we don't warp or crack the water pump housing. I'm gonna to go to one of the lower ones and do like a cross crossing pattern, just a small turn. Cool, and I'll come back up, pop it all the way off. So these will be different lengths, so just try to keep track of which one came from where. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, start, I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna work my way clockwise and I'm just gonna set them in order so I know what I started with. So this last bolt here on the bottom, it's directly beneath this 
larger bolt that's between these two pulleys. So if you have trouble finding it, don't take off the wrong bolt. Here comes some coolant. All right, I'm just gonna pull out this old O-ring, being very careful that I don't scratch the aluminum surface. I have a little dental pick that works good. You just whatever you do, you wanna just make sure you don't mess up that inside surface that's gonna ruin your new O-ring. Just use an old shirt or rag and get any loose bits of grease or rocks or oil away from the mating surface. All right, so before we put the new pump on, gonna put the O-ring in into the groove in the engine. Um, you can put a little dot of RTV on there just to hold it in place while you're monkeying the pump into position. Um, I have a can of this uh, gasket glue. It's like a temporary sticky thing that helps you hold gaskets in place while you're installing the parts. So I'm just gonna put a little of that on. Not necessary, but helpful. And just comparing the new part to the old, making sure my bolt pattern and spacing is the same, making sure my gasket surface is the same diameter, and obviously that the pulley is the same. Just for reference, this water pump bearing actually went bad. And I can really tell because it's super loose and really rough. You can hear it making noise. It should be a little bit stiff and super smooth. Shouldn't be able to free spin when you turn it like that. Good to go. I'm gonna set the impeller into the hole. Some guys will put RTV on the end of these water pump bolts, but you don't really need that. I've got these first two bolts just finger tight, holding it tight against the O-ring so that it doesn't fall out. Now I'm just gonna go down the line Going clockwise, put the bolts in. These last two are kind of tricky because it's really hard to see a hole, so you gotta do it mostly by feel. And then once you get the first couple turns in, put the socket on it so that you can finger tighten. Once you have all the bolts finger tight, ideally you have a torque wrench that you can evenly crank them all down to the same um, foot pound setting. So your longer bolts, you're gonna do to eight foot pounds and your shorter ones to six. The shorter ones in our rotation clockwise were the last one and the third to last one. If you don't have a torque wrench, it's not the end of the world. Just try to be as even as possible. Definitely don't over tighten these. They're only little 10 millimeter bolts. So when I'm tightening these up, you wanna kind of tighten one side then the other in an alternating pattern. I'm gonna do two passes, one halfway and then go around again, finish them all up to torque. This is just so you apply even pressure, even as you're tightening it down, so that nothing cracks or warps um, and goes on funny. So again, I'm not going all the way till the torque wrench clicks, I'm just kind of getting it snug. So now I've done a full rotation of all the bolts. Now I'm gonna actually tighten them to torque. There she is, skipping one. So for the back one, it's a shorter bolt, so I'm gonna do six foot pounds. Cross back up to this guy, which is an eight foot pounds. Last one. Done. All right, the time has come for alternator to go back in. So that's where the bottom of the alternator goes. There's a kind of a, a flange that goes on either side of this point. So it kind of sandwiches it and that's your struggle spot. So you just kind of want to get it on there and then work it back and forth and slide it on. Kind of do, got to do a lot of this by feel. There we go. I'm gonna put my top bolt through and kind of finger tighten it because that's gonna help me set my height. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the bolt and then I'm gonna swing the alternator up and down until I find it. Mm, too high. 
we go. Just use your ratchet to tighten this. You don't have to use anything too big like a breaker bar. That was just to get it off. And you definitely don't want to over tighten your top. It's a smaller bolt. Just nice and snug. One on top and our little one down below. Our harness bracket here. All right, time to put the belt back on. I'm actually putting a new belt on. Uh, I think the, the water pump, it was starting to seize up and causing the belt to rub. So it was looking a little worn. So I'm just gonna be safe. Put the belt over all the pulleys except for the alternator. Um, I usually leave that last, especially on this car because it's right here accessible and it's a nice small pulley. And I'm just putting my screwdriver through it to hold it in place while I get my breaker bar ready. My 19 mil. Not quite seated right. There we go. And now I can release the tension. Now that the belt is on, I'm gonna make really sure that it's seated properly on all the pulleys and that it's not slipped off when I was working on the tensioner. Looks good. Looks good all around. So I'm collected all my coolant. It actually looks in really good shape. So I'll be able to reuse this. Okay, obviously before you put coolant back in the radiator, you need to plug the drain. And uh, you can just start it by hand and do the last little snugging with the pliers. Don't need to go crazy, it's a plastic fitting. Easy to strip. And this is a kind of a problem spot. I found that these will often leak later on once you back them out and drain the radiator and put them back. So just keep a real close eye on it for the next day or so when you're driving the car. Make sure it's not leaking out of this drain hole. So when I'm putting in the uh, old coolant, obviously you're gonna need a funnel, and then I'm just gonna dump it in through a clean t-shirt just to strain out any loose chunks that would have fallen from the underside of the car or in my case, little bits of grass that blew under the car. Don't forget to replace your cap. Top cover back on. Good job guys, all done. Just make sure you warm the car up to operating temperature and check for leaks around the water pump and also uh, that drain, the radiator drain that we took off, make sure that's not leaking as well. Otherwise, you should be good to go. Hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.